Thanks, everybody, for taking some time out of your days to spend a little bit of time with us so that we can save you a ton of time beginning uh, the minute that you finish this webinar, <laughs> should you so desire. And so I'm going to do a quick intro here. My name is Mary Miller. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at QuickTag, and we talk about ourselves as, as QuickTag and ImageTag almost interchangeably. Just so you're clear, QuickTag is the product portfolio, ImageTag is the company, um, and so you'll see a little bit of, of both of those names in here. I'm joined today by my colleague, Sean Fitzgerald, and he is the account manager that will work with all of you when you, you know, raise your hand, express interest to turnkey, say, hey, I'd like to see a little bit more about this, that, or the other with QuickTag. Sean, if you want to say hello. Hello, everybody. And Sean hates it when I spend more than 10 seconds on this slide, so I'm going <laughs> to go ahead slide and slide about me. And yes, move on. yes that me. really is us. We didn't Photoshop those images at all. Um, but, anyway. something, but something cool about Sean Fitzgerald for the audience yes. to know, um, which I think is cool. Uh, I'm from St. Louis too. Brad mentioned Turnkey's based in St. Louis. I'm a St. Louis kid, uh, born and raised and grew up there. So I love it when, especially uh, with tur working with Turnkey and especially when they're all their clients, but a particular fondness for their St. Louis clients. Clients, We can talk about uh, high school and Ted Drews and Toasted Ravioli together. So, <laughs> Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Also being from the Midwest, I can relate to that, although not St. Louis. So definitely uh, excited to have that hometown hometown connection there, Sean. Uh, so for everybody joining the call today, you're here for, for a reason. The reason is that at some point in your daily life or in the lives of your peers, you have challenges or pains, as it were, dealing with the way that you handle expenses in your organization today. Well, I have, I have good news for you. You're not alone. Um, I have more good news for you. There are solutions to these challenges, but let's talk a little bit about what those challenges are uh, before we know, you know, what that prescription might look like, right, for, for the solution to that. So the, the reality today is that 52% of expense reports and receipts are still physically mailed to accounts payable. So a lot of paper, a lot of receipts. Think about the last time you traveled. Maybe you were here in Summit last week here in Phoenix. And, you know, you came home with a stack full of receipts, hoping that you remembered them all, right? Hoping there isn't one lost somewhere in your hotel room or on the plane or at the bottom of your bag, those kinds of things. And it's your job then to stop what you're doing, your day job, your responsibility of helping your clients or working with others in your organization, processing financials, you know, and you're going to go find all of those receipts. Now, most of you are probably, many of you are probably in accounting or a related field, so you probably did a really good job to take care of them, but not everybody does. And let's face it, we process expense reports for all of our potential employees or consultants or those that work on our behalf. Maybe they're meeting with clients, maybe they're traveling for the business at a convention or whatever. We come back with these paper receipts. We have to then, most times, if it's still handled manually, create an Excel spreadsheet or some sort of form template ideally, right? Type in all of our receipt data, submit that, usually by printing it and stapling those receipts to the expense report and mailing it somewhere. Hopefully we're at a point now where we can scan those in and email them to someone, but not everybody supports that. As you can see, 52% still mailed to accounts payable. The reality of that is then that they take up to 30 days many times to process. What that time and the manual effort put into that translates to, as you can see on the middle block on this slide, is about $26.60 per report that's processed that way. So adding even a little bit of automation is going to save us time. Adding in a solution that has complete automation and integration with GP, like what you're going to see today, can reduce that cycle time up to 600%. I know what you're thinking, that seems absurd, Barry. Nobody can reduce it 600%. But think about this. Today, it spends you spend on average 50 minutes every time you do an, a, an expense report manually stapling the receipts, typing everything in. 50 minutes, let's even round up and call it an hour just for sake of argument. And you now have to then wait up to 30 days, sometimes longer, to get that back. What else could you be doing with that time? You can see how that quickly becomes a frustration for the person submitting those expense reports. Not to mention the visibility that the accounting team needs and that they don't have. 
So let's think about where your organization fits in this grid, right? So this is a chart of the number of expense reports processed based on the different type or size of company, right? So based on the research that we did with Paystream advisors here, 51% of organizations process less than 500 expense reports per month. So that might be you. You might be thinking, I have less than 500 a month. I, you know, my organization can, can handle that. It, it might be a little bit painful, but we can handle that. Well, the reality is, again, some automation can go a long way to freeing up that time. You look at the other end of that extreme, 20% of organizations process more than 10,000 expense reports per month. So, and everybody else everywhere in between. So think about the challenges that come along with that. Let's take a look at some of them together here. The manual data entry, we've talked about that. It's inefficient, it's time consuming. It prevents the staff that you have out in the fields or within your offices from doing their day job, from doing the job they're hired to do, helping customers running the business and the like. It gives you no visibility from an accounting standpoint. You have not only the lack of visibility into the actual expense reports, their supporting detail, the receipts that make up that expense report, but also to your expected liability then. If your team is traveling, sure, you've got historical data and averages and the like, but you have no idea what's actually going to be coming in on a given month. You're, you're hoping for best guess, right? So from an accounting standpoint, we need to have that visibility into what our liability is for, for these expenses. Lengthy reimbursement cycles. As I mentioned, the average is about 30 days and can be even higher. Well, what that equates to is, unfortunately, then unhappy employees sitting waiting for, for reimbursements. And so that kind of thing really needs to be factored into what what is this costing me? What is this pain point actually costing our organization? Well, I've done a little quick math here for us. And even if you process on the low end, remember 51% of organizations process less than 500 expense reports per month. Well, if your number is somewhere around the 300 mark or less, that's gonna be somewhere around the $8,000 per month range from an actual cost standpoint. So you can think about as you're building your business case, as you turn to your partner at Turnkey to say, hey, you know, we didn't realize before how many manual expense reports, what that actually was costing us, how many were coming into our uh, accounting department. We, we didn't take the time to think about it, but now that we're kind of aware of this, we need to build a business case. Use these, use these figures, use this research. We have it uh, available for you. Uh, not only our own website, but certainly we can share it with you on a page that we have specifically with Turnkey. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. So we understand the pains. We understand the cost. We understand that there is a time element, a visibility element, a, a potentially frustrated employees or contractors waiting for reimbursement. So let's talk a little bit about the solution to that then. Well, when you work with an organization like QuickTag or a, a product set like QuickTag, you're really getting the value of three unique sets of functionality all bundled into one solution. And in this case, the solution is designed to automate your expense management product. So right? We're all beginning that, or maybe we're further along in that digital transformation process. No matter where you are in your organization, everybody I've talked to, bar none, says they could still be doing better. There's other departments. There's still file cabinets somewhere in the organization. There's still, you know, wall-to-wall, floor-to-ceiling shelves of, of boxes and the like, or maybe you're using off-site storage for things once they get archived. One way or the other, get the documents into the system so that they're digital, make them digitally captured first. That's step one. Step two is no matter what solution you implement for either capturing or automating your processes, capturing documents or automating your processes, it's very, very important that they integrate with the core systems that support your business. So that integration today, we're going to show you how it integrates, how expense management integrates very deeply uh, with Dynamics GP. So you'll see that integration. So capture the documents digitally, in this case, receipts and the like. Integrate very deeply with GP and then automate that process from submitter to approver to GP. And then on the back end for the accounts payable team to have that visibility, whether, again, you're using corporate cards 
or reimbursable expenses. Sean's going to actually show us both of those. So I'm going to uh, make Sean the presenter and switch this over so he can get his demo environment up for us. We'll do a, a quick handoff. But as Sean's pulling up his demo environment, just know that what you're going to see in this demonstration will be applicable for you if you use corporate cards. So the company is, is issuing the corporate card and the employee uses that card and, and charges automatically, just has to submit their receipts, and or if you are using your own money, your own card, and getting reimbursed from the company. So we're going to look at, at both of those scenarios in the demonstration with Sean here. Sean, go ahead. Okay, great. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, and just to kind of dovetail a little bit off what she talked about just a slide or two ago, um, and I'll just touch really briefly on this right now, do remember that, and this is a, a key differentiator for QuickTag, uh, is that we're not just an expense management solution. We're going to focus on that in the next few minutes for sure. But I do want you to know, uh, again, to reiterate what Mary said, is that this is a document management system uh, integrated to Dynamics GP at anywhere between 50 and 80 screens, depending on what you're using. Um, and that's what you see on my screen right now. I have you know, QuickTag connected to GP at 49 screens in my demo environment. We create drawers, which are storage units for all these drawers. I've opened up the invoice drawer. Here's all the files in that drawer. There's the document. You can save all these documents uh, that you need to through Dynamics GP. You can build QuickTag out and save other documents in there, you know, HR, marketing, uh, legal, IT, whatever you need to. Um, and so all that is available. We have an incredible invoice automation solution as well. So if you have AP vendors and we need to uh, automate solutions. We've done webinars. You may have been on them before with, with Turnkey and, and seen all that. So, so do know that that's one of the things that makes us so unique um, with this expense management solution is that everything else you get with it, you're going to at least get the document management solution along with it. Um, and then it'll be really easy for you to add the invoice solution as well. But we're not here for that today. We're here to take a look at our brand new quick expense solution. So let's focus on that. Okay, so this is the uh, the dashboard uh, for our quick expense solution. And if you notice, by the way, I kind of breezed through it, but I, like I said, it's all part of QuickTag now. I hit this little uh, menu icon here in the top left-hand corner. We call it the waffle menu here. <laughs> but I hit that menu, and there's all your different places you can go in QuickTag. Right? I can go to my task. Like I said, I can go to my drawers, which is where I just was. I can go to my task and approve invoices or kick off invoices for workflow. I got reports, obviously. And then quick expense, that's what I chose there. So um, if that's what I want to do, again, it's all part of the same system. So we're going to start with, I'm going to show you two different scenarios today. Uh, we're going to start with the idea that I'm an employee. I'm Sean, uh, the employee, and I have uh, some receipts that uh, I have to build an expense report on. And my my situation here is that I'm issued a company credit card. So we use American Express here internally. So I got an Amex uh, corporate card that I've traveled with, accumulated some receipts. It's time for me to do my report. And that's the scenario we're going to run through. We'll start there. And then the second one I'll show you is really the same thing. But what if I spent my own money and it was more of a reimbursable situation where uh, same exact thing, but uh, we just uh, it's reimbursable versus uh, corporate card. So let's start with the corporate card. So you see in our dashboard, if you're looking closely, you'll see we've got to have two sides of it. Left-hand side is uh, is where we deal with receipts. And again, I'm just logged in as the employee. So this would be the employee experience. Um, and then I have reports on the, on the right-hand side. So now what's happened here and kind of assumed is that over the course of this time period, we'll call it a month, that's what's most common. People do one expense report a month. Um, you can do them, of course, whenever you want to, but That'll be our scenario. Um, and over the course of this month, I've accumulated, it looks like it says here, receipts incomplete three. So not very realistic, but good enough for a demo. I just have three receipts. And uh, I've captured those somehow, meaning if they were emailed to me, I forwarded them here into my quick tag, quick expense queue. Um, if they were uh, something like, a, I think we have one of these, what I call a point of sale receipt, meaning I don't know, think about Starbucks, you know, you, you get it, you're on travel and you're going to the airport, you grab a Starbucks, they hand you the receipt at the point of sale. I take my phone out, I snap a picture of it with my phone, attach it to an email, send it in to this position here in, inside of QuickTag. So however you want to uh, accumulate them, you can. You can browse out and upload receipts. It's, that's the easiest thing, getting the receipts in. So now, as I said, it's time to do my report. 
I come back in here uh, into my quick uh, into my quick quick expense queue. I see I have my three incomplete receipts. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to take me into them. Okay. So I can click on any one of these line items and see the different receipts. There's the one, like I said, that I just snapped a picture of. It's a $55 meal receipt. This is uh, looks like an Uber ride or something like that. Rode with Lucy on the way to the airport, probably. And then here is a yeah, arguably a mocked up uh, airline receipt that we have for you from American Express for $300. Okay, so this is going to become our expense report. So now that's what I did as the employee. Okay, as the employee, I just sent these in over the course of time and they accumulate here. But here's something really cool that I want to show you that happened uh, before all this. So sometime, you know, over the course of the month, um, and, and actually probably even uh, right towards, you know, the time when uh, the end of the period for the uh, corporate card statement. I know here ours runs to like the 26th to the 27th of the following month, something kind of weird like that. So at the right time, AP, so probably most of you guys on the phone, someone in AP, I, we would assume would be in this role, is going to go up to, in my scenario, the American Express corporate card website, right? Log into the, the image tag account, and there's the corporate card statement for everybody, for all credit card users in the whole company. I'm going to download it as a CSV. Uh, and then I am going to go ahead and pull it right into, uh, into QuickTag. So I could just come here, hit new statement, browse out. I'm, again, I'm the AP person, right? Browse out, grab that CSV file. I don't have one here, but, um, but grab the CSV file, bring it right in, and it would upload right here. Well, what would be the result of that? The result of that is that it would take all those transactions in, QuickTag will. It'll take all the transactions in on that entire corporate card report, and it will then uh, distribute the data of those into each individual user's account within QuickTag, into their quick expense account. Okay? And by the way, not only does it do that, and we'll see the really cool result of that, but it also sends them an email, and yeah, here it is. So they're going to get an email that looks a lot like this. Right? Every individual, now this is mine, this says I have two, this is an older one, um, but they're going to get an email a lot like this, the following state, AMEX statement entries are missing, matching, so this tells me, right, if I have receipts in there or not. So my point is, is that not only are we going to dump all the data into the individual's uh, uh, system, but they're also going to get an email notification as they go through this process that all their receipts are missing. Maybe they run the report and one's missing. They'll get a notification that another one is missing and so on. But let's look here at the statement. So right now I can look at, this is just my state. This isn't the corporate-wide statement. This is the result of my results. It shows me that I have three transactions. Now I showed you I had the receipts in there, but I haven't coded them yet. I haven't put any data against those receipts. So as far as QuickTag is concerned, they're not in there yet. I know the images are there, but but they're not, the transactional data isn't in there yet. Hey, Sean, I wanted to just see if you could show something really cool on this screen before we jump back to sure, tagging yeah. those receipts. In that little hamburger menu right at the top of that gray bar next to the word all, yeah, check that out. So think, think this through, right? If you're in accounting and you see that all of these are red, you don't know if Sean looked at that email that he just showed us like yesterday or last week, right? So if you send that send missing receipts, the top mm -hmm. option there, it's going to send him another email right now and say, hey, Sean, you're missing these receipts. I need to get this data in. I got to get the bill paid. But think of the time that that's going to save your accounting team that right now they're running around the building. They're making phone calls. They're chasing Sean because he clearly hasn't gotten his receipts in yet. We'll give Sean a hard time because he hasn't done it yet. But he's going to show us how and it's going to be so fast when he does. But it's really cool because the the pressure that that takes off the accounting team just from having that visibility and the option to just quick click that little send all those receipts right away makes it super fast and, and really takes the burden off of the accounting team and puts it on the user but gives them exactly what they're looking for at the same time. So that's really cool too. Just wanted to have you highlight cool. Thanks, Sean. Yep. So there's, oh, look at that. Let's look, let's look at that one actually generate it. There you go. So this is the new version. I was showing you the older version of it. This is the new version of what gets sent out right now. So this came to me, Sean, and shows me that, yeah, those three receipts are missing. Okay. So, uh, and, and again, as Mary said, the AP person can do that once and everybody in the company 
that needs it will get that same email for their individual receipts. Okay, so let's that's reconciliation. And once you see that, that's where things start. Now, as the as the employee, and some of that might not you know even make a difference to me. I might not even need to worry about that because all I got to do is come in here and, and and take care of these receipts. Okay, all right. So I have my three receipts. Let's hit the menu here and let's add receipt data. So this is my fifty-five dollar receipt, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right down here, that's a little too big, and right here on payment type, I'm going to switch it from reimbursable to American Express, and obviously specific to me. So when I hit that, there's that transactional data. Again, pulling from that report that my AP person put in as the employee, I have the transactional data. So this is my $55 uh, meal receipt. I can see that, so I'm just going to double, I'm just going to click on that. It enters the receipt amount for me. It puts comments in that it's a receipt and meal. Um, and really, that's that you know it enters the date for me and everything. Now it doesn't code it for me. Uh, as the employee, I need to tell QuickTag you know how uh, what uh, account codes this is going to get uh, uh, posted against. Um, now, but I'm a guy in sales and I don't know GL codes. And if you tried to train me, I would forget and get them wrong, right? So, uh, but I do know. Hey, I'm in the sales department. I remember that, and I do know that. What's that? Well, that is a, oh, yeah, it looks like a restaurant that I ate at, so I know that this is meals, right? And so what's going to happen? And we can have more drop downs as needed, but what's happening? Well, on the back end, once we push all this out, QuickTag is going to take these little segments, depart, you know, sales, meals, obviously, and you can tell what it's doing, right? It's going to apply, build, configure to the GL string, the proper GL string. So we'll do it on the back end. Obviously, we work with you for that configuration, but the point is is that on the front end, the employee only needs to enter a few simple fields and the segment will build on its own. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and submit that one and uh, hit submit. It'll take me to my next one. We'll open that up, add receipt data, just kind of lather, rinse, repeat, right? Sean, this is my $10 ride with Lucy. We'll just put all these in there. Sales, travel, right? Submit. You guys get the idea. We'll do one more and uh, and be done with it. We'll do add receipt data. And just while you're doing that, Sean, I'll throw in that uh, a question that we often get asked here is, could I split this out? Let's say this trip was on behalf of two different departments. And so as you're showing that receipt line data, of course, you could just add another line and separate that. As long as the total of the line amount line amounts equal the actual receipt amount, you could code this to different departments if it, if it was being exactly, if it was for multiple um, segments or sections, departments or whatever, projects yeah. perhaps, perhaps in so the organization. For yeah. 150 and then add a line um, item. Yep. And then go, we'll make it uh, engineering for travel for 150 so I can split it out, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, thanks for doing that. You bet. Oh, and by the way, since we're talking about adding line items, let's add one more. You know what? I don't have a receipt for this, but it was the, related to the same trip. And um, I took um, a cab. Let's say I took, or no, say I drove to the airport, right? So it's still travel related, but I drove from my house to the airport, left my car in long-term parking, and I know that's 15 miles, and so it'll calculate the mileage for me and put that in. So I got a reimbursable, you know, nine dollar amount. Um, am I going to break this, Mary? If I do that now that I'm yeah, here? you're going to have to cancel that one and show it as a uh, reimbursable expense. Yeah, that's a re that's a reimbursable experience. Yeah, <laughs> so there's no receipt for that. All right, so uh, but you guys get the idea. Well, you saw the miles there. I wanted to, wanted to know why it was there. Okay, so let's go ahead and submit this one. And there we go. So I've submitted my three receipts. Uh, I've put those in. And uh, and now uh, what happens is, is I'm done. <laughs> As an employee, I don't have to do anything. Uh, well, wait a minute, Sean. Did you have to do your report? No, nope, I don't have to do my report. Uh, it builds the report for me. Okay. So if I come down here right now, you'll see I have one expense report ready to roll. So I'll open it up. And there it is. Um, we have uh, an $844 expense report waiting for us okay um, and so it builds it for me and what I can see here is that I can open this up and Mary it didn't look like everything got included in there to do it too soon I think no just go back to your dashboard 
and click on the right hand side under reports. That was one that's waiting for you to review as department manager. Uh, I there, the wrong one. there you go. I can be. This I is how new this is, folks. It's so new and exciting yeah, that the team yeah. is still is still having fun with it. But I clicked on the wrong one. Got moving too fast. Thank you. That's not my right one. All right. So here we go. So let's open this up, and we can see the one items here. So there we go. There's our three hundred dollars, um, our ten dollars, and our fifty-five. Okay. So uh, if I'm happy with this, um, with this report. Um, and you can see we got two line items there, broke, broke out those two line items. You know, I can drill into the line items and, and, and look at all this stuff if I want to. Um, but if I like the report and I'm good with it, I then just simply have to go and say uh, send for approval. Okay? So I will send for approval and now I'm done. So really all I have to do is over the course of the month, as you've seen, I send in my receipts. Great. When I'm done as an employee, I go in, I match up the receipt to the right transactional data, I take a look at the report, and I send it for approval. I don't even have to do, I don't even have to do a report, essentially. QuickTag does the report for you, okay? So as the end user, I'm done. I can go back to work. Um, and that just sent an, a report for approval over to the approver, obviously. And in this case, it's CFO. So in the top right-hand corner, you can see I just did that as Sean, department manager. That's how I'm logged in as. I'm going to click over here on this tab, and you'll see now I'm logged in as Sean CFO. So hey, let's Sean, before we do that, could we take a look at what the accounting view is now that we saw everything read before? If we hop back to the AP view. Oh, list. yeah, right. Thank you for reminding me. Let's go back over here. Now let's go to Reconcile, and let's go to American Express Sean. Let's go to our, oh, they're not red anymore. They're green because <laughs> I've, I've done them. Right, so that's the good news. So again, I'm just seeing I, as an employee, I may or may not come and look at this, but there is a global view of this report for the entire company that certainly AP can go into and see what receipts are done and what receipts aren't. Green ones are done, obviously red ones are missing, have not been compiled. So yep. All right. So uh, yeah. So that that's you know great activity for me and then of course you know if there were missing receipts I can't send a missing receipts report because there isn't any but again as Mary said as the AP person if there were, were still some missing uh, amongst my user population I could send that report again so okay so let's jump over here to uh, to the CFO and let me refresh this and is it gonna be this one or are we yep. wait we're still no, waiting down there. Yeah, right there so we're gonna yep. click on this one right here we're going to open up this. So now this is Sean's boss, right? The CFO um, is the one that is going to approve this. So we can uh, let's open this up a little bit here. So you can see I have uh, these three receipts, uh, meals and two and travel. So if I want to see, the, and ultimately I'm just going to, you know, click here and, hey, approve expense report. Um, but if I want to dig into any of this detail, I can. So I can see that, you know, some of the detail, restaurant, meal, beverage, and get a little more detail there if I want it. And if I'm interested for whatever reason to see the receipt, I can see it there. If I can't quite make that out, it's not big enough, I can open it up in your browser on its own. Okay. So we're going to have all the receipt uh, images available, all the transactional data available. Um, and then if I want to, uh, to approve it, I can. Now, I can also open this up and drill down into things, and I can say, yeah, I'm going to approve this and that. But 55 bucks for for dinner? Uh, no, Fitzgerald, you get your own food. So I can hit reject, and I can so I can do line item approval and rejection is the point, right? So I can then reject this one, go back up and approve the header, approve the rest of it, right? And what will happen is this will move forward in the workflow process without that rejected line item. The rejected line item goes back to Sean the employee. Right? And he is going to get that in his task list, and it's going to say that it was rejected. And oftentimes when you reject something, you put in comments, and the, maybe the boss tells you why. And so now I'm going to get that. So now let's say I don't agree with that. Right? I mean, if I agree with it, I can say, okay, great, and I remove it from my report. If I don't agree with it, if maybe the boss is wrong and didn't understand something and I need to plead my case, we'll say, I can put a comment in and send it back to the boss. And now the boss can get it. And if that's the scenario, we can set this up so that the reporting is held, right? It goes in kind of a hold status until Sean, the employee, gets a chance to respond and then uh, and take action on that. And then if it comes back in and rejoins the whole report, because maybe the CFO goes, 
oh, okay, I didn't understand that. I get it. It is approved. It now moves forward and joins the rest of the report. So that's pretty cool too. So uh, common scenarios, you know, you might not have thought about it, but pretty common type scenarios where different things where you would need a line item approval and, and rejection. So let's just go ahead and approve this expense report. Um, we'll hit approve, comments if you want. Uh, we'll click approve there, and away it goes. And that's it. So as the, 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 the approver's pretty simple job too. Open it, look at it, drill in as much as they want. Maybe they don't need to drill in at all. Um, and just click approve and you're done. And so that's where this ends here in QuickTag and then we push it over into GP. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. QuickTag comes alive off the additional menu. Any screen, we'll go into the payable transaction entry screen and we're gonna come up and bring our work queue that says tag documents, view document search. These are all quick tag commands, obviously. We're interested in looking at our work queue inside of GP. So I'll click view work queue, opens it up, and we're gonna have all of our transactions. And ours is gonna be right here down at the bottom. Actually, it's gonna be this one, this American Express one. And uh, for $365, you can see. So the vendor is American Express. That's who this was payable to. And so if we want to open this up and take a look at it, we can. So we can open up and say, view the document. And it's going to take me right back out to that experience where I can see the actual document. Okay, And I can drill into it however I need to. So if I want to, but if I want to just create it, uh, let me get this here. If I just want to create it, all I have to do is hit create. Now I'm going to hit create and it's going to sign it to a batch. So if I wanted to take several American Express statements at once, I could. But if I'm just interested in this one, um, I can go ahead and hit create. Assign it to an open batch if I want. There's all our open batches. Uh, don't laugh, it's a demo database. Um, but I can assign it to an open batch. Um, and then, or if I just want to um, create a batch name on the fly, I can do that as well. Um, and I'm going to hit turn key. It will be my batch uh, name. We might have more than one of those in there, so I better put today's date on it. We'll call it turnkey 1025. So I'm going to sign this transaction to that batch. Hit yes, and you're going to watch this one disappear. There you go. Now it's gone. Like I said, I just did one, but uh, I could have done several if I wanted to. So we will uh, look that one up, I'll show you that it created. Let's go to turnkey. Uh, there we go, 10, 1025, and here we are. So created um, a, a transaction here, uh, payable to American Express, as we can see, for $365. And if we open up the distributions, you'll see that they all came over as well, $10,355. So three different transactions, all GL coded. Um, and and you still have visibility to the uh, to the document that you, that you need. So we just hit view documents, and again takes us right back, and we can open that up and then take a look and drill down as need be. Okay. All right, Mary. What else? Anything else with quick expense that I forgot to show everyone? Well, maybe we could take a quick look at the reimbursable experience, just because the Sure. User sees just a little, a little bit different information. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That. So yeah. I'm going to jump into Sean, the employee, now. I'm going to go into Quick Expense. And here you go, my receipt side, incomplete 14. I've got quite a few of them. Um, so really the same experience. I'm not going to take you guys all the way through this, but it's really very, very similar. Same scenario. I, just, I accumulate my receipts in my queue over the course of time. And then we come in here and I hit Add Receipt Data. And, you know, I don't have the line item, the, the luxury of the line item like we do for the corporate card, um, but it's really easy to put information in. I'll just use today's date, use the date of the receipt, um, and then it all builds really the same way. It's going to be sales, you know, this is travel. You get the idea, right? It all builds the same way. So come in here and, uh, and then just uh, submit things and submit your report. So, um, again. Pretty easy, and then I'll accumulate all those. I'll, I'll code them all. I'll create the report. I'll send it for approval, and it'll push it into GP. And in this situation, uh, it will create a payable in GP to the employee. 
most most of you tell us that you set up your employees as a vendor in GP to get them paid with reimbursables, um, and so uh, it'll be paid. This would be payable to Sean Fitzgerald inside of GP. Yep, exactly. And and at that level, Sean, you would have been able to add mileage, for example, because that's right. a reimbursable thing. You know, expense. So yeah. that'd be another thing you could add. Absolutely. Yeah, just add the line item there and, right. and move on. So. Right. Very cool. And what's cool about that, too, is for mileage, if, if for those of you who have individuals who have maybe a specific mileage rate, we'll help you determine what the default is. You'll tell us, actually, what the default mileage rate is for your company. But let's say there's individuals that are in a certain region or, or on a specific customer project or whatever. They need a unique mileage rate. We can control that and, and make it real easy for you to set that up for each user as well for those that need exceptions. So that mileage rate will calculate, that mileage amount will calculate automatically based on the rate that you give us and we'll put into the system for you. So anything else you wanted to highlight then on, on the quick tag side, Sean, or AP, or should we jump back into the slides? Uh, you know, I'll just touch on, we have a few minutes, I'll just touch on AP real quick. I'm not going to go through this in detail, guys, and especially if you've joined us on previous uh, webinars, you've seen this. But just to give you a high-level look at what, how, how we handle uh, invoices, so this is my invoice queue. Uh, tag is step one in the workflow process there. These are nine invoices that I've either sent in QuickTag on my own or my vendor has actually uh, sent in for me. I come in here, um, this is where I do the data entry, I fill all this out, this is our GP professional client. This obviously looks just like GP, it's integrated to your GP database in real time, all this information that it's pulling back is from your actual system. Um, so you can come in here and fill things out and I can continue on, I can even do my, my uh, GL distributions here. Um, I can do lookups and do my GL coding, and if I, if I had some G, uh, standard GLs already in there, I would automatically uh, pick them for me. Let's see there, so put 1500 bucks in and, you know, it gives me my, my, my perch and it will give me my pay codes. Um, I choose the approver from a list and I send it on for approval. I can also create templates for this, right? So I could create a template and it would save all this information for me. Next time I choose the template and it fills all this information out for me every time after that, right? I choose the advanced office systems template for phones or something like that um, and it'll fill it out for me. So great efficiencies there. What that does is that sends uh, an approval to, uh, to whoever the approver is. Uh, they can approve via email or they can approve right from inside a quick tag. We'll take a look at what the approval looks like. Um, we go to invoices here. Uh, again, they're going to get their approval here in QuickTag. There's the invoice. I can click approve, reject with comments, delegate to someone else. I can see the coding. I can see the workflow history. So this is the approver experience. Step one, AP fills it all out in the GP looking like <laughs> experience. Step two, we approve here. And then step three is really just the uh, very much like what you saw with, with the expenses. In fact, you probably noticed when I was in this queue, it's the same queue where we created our expense report, report into GP, um, I would just grab the invoice, right? Exact same thing, grab the invoice, hit create, assign it to a batch. Uh, the end of that story is very much the same. And of course, they also get uh, uh, invoice, people also get uh, uh, email opportunities to to approve things via emails too. So I get the invoice attached. I can open that up and look at it. I get all the information down here and then I can just click the little green button at the bottom of my email. I can be on my phone traveling, whatever, at an airport and I'm going, you know, got some time and I'm approving, approving invoices on the road. Just click approve, it sends it and I'm done. So we can, uh, you know, easily uh, automate your vendor invoice approvals as well. So I know that was pretty quick and pretty high level, but not really the focus of today's uh, webinar. But I just wanted to remind you, for any of those that haven't seen it, we got you covered all over on expenses, employee expenses, as well as vendor expenses. And then as I started out with, don't forget, we also do any document management needs that you have. Now, that when I say document management, you think of storage, right, uploading documents and, and attaching them. But... This is a pretty robust, powerful workflow engine that QuickTag has. And so if you have some other processes you want to throw at us, um, we do some things with human resources, employees, and things like that. 
Um, but whatever, the, there's a document, right? And it has a process that it's got to flow through your organization and that needs review and or usually some time of approval. Um, and if there's enough volume in that document, in that process on a consistent basis, that it causes you some headache and some slowdown, it might not even be in accounting. But if you know of it somewhere else, QuickTag can help you with that too. So again, today's webinar was all about expenses. We did our best to focus on that, but there's just too much more that QuickTag does that brings value to the organization that it's just hard for us not to talk about it. So uh, that's a little more high level there. But Mary, that's about all I have, unless you think I, I missed something. Excellent. Yeah, no worries. I'll go back to, can you pass the presenter back to me and we'll cover some more uh, recap then before we add questions. So if you do have questions and you haven't yet put them into the chat window or the questions box in your GoToWebinar, please do that now. And we'll get to them in just a few minutes. So Sean, don't go anywhere because there could be some questions coming your way. So just a quick recap of what we looked at for the expense management solution. Simple receipt capture. Take a picture with your phone and send it in or forward an email if you got you know, your hotel bill or whatever. Add that data really quickly and easily online. As a user, you'll get email notifications along the way. Remember, we talked about visibility being a challenge and lengthy reimbursement cycles. Well, all of those things are covered with email notification for the submitter, for the approver, and for AP if you need if you need notification of those along the way. Now that can get rather overwhelming if you got an email notification in AP for everybody's expense reports along the way. But remember, you have that visibility for reconciliation and dashboard viewing as well. So email notifications certainly facilitate the user experience and the approval process, as Sean uh, demonstrated for us here. And then that automatic expense report creation. Certainly, if it's a corporate card, he didn't even have to click a button. It was built automatically because the system knows which transactions are for the corporate card because they were uploaded as part of that statement upload. And once they're in for all of the different corporate card users, then the accounting team knows it's okay to go ahead and, and process the rest of that, pay the bill, as it were. And then you have that visibility into what's available, what's missing, what's matched, what's um, not yet been processed by those individual users. Reimbursable, of course, can be submitted at any time, but you still get that visibility once they're in the process, approver gets notification, submitter gets notification along the way. So some of those notifications come in really handy, as Sean demonstrated, for when you're on the road. We talk to clients all the time who have, you know, people that expense or have to approve expense reports and manage expense reports. They're constantly on the road. So having that instant notification on your phone and the ability to approve or reject on your phone comes in really, really handy using your corporate email, of course, but anymore, all of us have that right access in our, in our mobile device. So remember we talked about it takes the average employee to uh, 50 minutes for processing an expense report. We've just shown you two or three different kinds in the matter of much less than 50 minutes, and it probably took us about 10 times longer to demonstrate it because, of course, we're describing it as we go through that process, but just think about the simplicity and the time that it'll save your users, your submitters of expense reports. They can capture and submit receipts from their phone. It increases their employee satisfaction. I used to work for a company that had to wait for the expense report to get to the headquarters in the UK office before it could even begin to get processed, and then, of course, I would have to wait for the approval to come back, and then the payment to come back. So it was even more than 30 days on average. So many of you can relate to that. So if you have even more than one location for your organization, chances are this is a painful and time-consuming process. And as you saw from an integration standpoint, I, I can't um, describe to you enough, even at, at Summit, we made had so many conversations with people just how easy the integration is to GP, where you see that instant creation of GL codes that doesn't require your team, your users, to know any sort of coding. They pick their department, they pick the type of expense it is, and off it goes. So make that process easy for them, easy for accounting, and automate it end-to-end -end with the visibility throughout every step of the process. And then as a quick look as we uh, talked about AP automation, again, that GP integration is so key, where invoices can be sent in, and we encourage you to encourage your vendors to do the same thing. Email the invoices into a single queue so that you don't have your accounting team chasing paper all over the department or looking in the mailroom, that sort of thing. Email them into a common queue, have them be routed for approval. 
with either email or online visibility, integrate with GP, and have those transactions created with the GL coding built in. Now, another thing I'll just mention, Sean showed you that you can tag documents, certainly from the payables transaction entry, but also from, as he mentioned, up to 79 other screens where you simply click the additional tag documents before or after posting. And once you do need to drill back to that transaction from anywhere else in GP, that document is still going to be visible for you. We don't take up any additional technical resources. We're not storing these in GP. They're actually stored in QuickTag. So we're making your, your technical and your business uh, process actually very efficient in that regard. And then also we have purpose-built integrations on the AP side for binary stream multi-entity management, as well as key to act job cost. So if you're using those other third-party integrations, we work very well with those um, on the AP automation side as well. So we like to encourage you to think of QuickTag as, as your Swiss Army knife of, of automation tools or of, of tools that integrate with your GP system. While GP is certainly core to your business, things will come into play like human resources and legal contracts and, you know, setting notifications and reminders in the system for yourself. All of those things are possible. And of course, with multi-currency and tax schedules, and as your business gets more complex and your employees need more visibility and access to documents across your organization, chances are QuickTech can help. So don't hesitate to reach out to Turnkey uh, or to to Sean with questions like that. In case you're new to QuickTag and, and don't know kind of our background, our story as it were, we've been around for 21 years and we're a gold Microsoft development partner. And as it happens, we were actually the first to integrate a lot of different scenarios. And chances are, if you encounter any of these accounting related or non-accounting related, We've, we've been there, we've seen it, we can help you. And if we haven't, we'll figure it out together uh, because we, we love a good challenge as well. And over the course of those 21 years, we've developed 120,000 business users around the globe and we literally have automated many, many different types of processes. So outside of accounting, we have the ability to automate just about any process. And as a result of that, we've built, we've continued to innovate. We have nine patents associated with our brand, and they continue to grow. So with every iteration and quick expense being the newest of the family, you've seen here the beginning of, of what's next, the future of the roadmap, because that's not going to, that's not going to stop. So a little bit of a snapshot of our, our family, a family photo, as it were. And the reason I like to talk about this or share this is, you know, of course, everybody has their brag board, right? But, but that's not the point. The point is there's companies of all shapes and sizes and industries that work with QuickTag. And the reason for that is they all started with those same challenges, lack of visibility, too much paper, somebody's frustrated because they don't have access to the documents when they need them and for the purpose that they need them. And especially they need that integration with their ERP system in this case being GP. So hopefully you've gone ahead and entered your questions into the question box on the GoToWebinar panel. And at this time then I'm going to hand it back to Brad to facilitate whatever questions we may have. And I also am going to pull up this page so that we can just take a look at uh, where you can go for more information as well. Hey Mary, thanks, it's Brad here. Um, so yeah, we did get a handful of questions. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go right ahead. Okay, great. Um, the first one is, are the ones in red font, and I apologize, I may have should have asked this when it came up during the, the demo, but are the, are the ones in red font required by the salesperson to fill out? Will it prevent them from submitting if not complete? And can the fields be customized as to which ones we want to be required? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll take that in two phases. And, and the areas that Sean showed in red related to the corporate card statement were required based on the data that comes through from the actual statement itself. And so therefore they're determined as part of the transaction and therefore required. Now the general, if it's read, it's required is up to you, the user. So you can decide, you know, we don't maybe need a description or maybe we don't need two types. Maybe we just need one option. It depends on how your GL structure is managed. So you tell us based on your, uh, GL account structure and the way that documents or the way that expense reports need to be approved um, and additional routing, what things are required for your business and how they need to flow through the system from there. So yes, they are configurable 
you determine what's required um, with the exception of the corporate card. Some of that is determined based on the card data itself. We have to pull in the transaction data as it's, as it's provided to us. And you're going to want that same level of data to go through to GP. So I think I answered both sides of that. But if I didn't, put in another question and we'll continue to address it. So yeah, great question. Okay, Thanks, great. Brad. What's next? Mm -hmm. Next one is, is there an app that we can snap photos of receipts? Uh, yes, it's called your phone. No, <laughs> um, I'm only saying that jokingly because we get asked, is there an app every single time? Sean, I don't know, have you done a demo yet where you haven't seen, haven't gotten that question? It's in the works. Um, so the, the beauty of, of Quick Expense is that you're getting access to this full set of functionality with a really deep integration into GP, and you can have it you know, today. Um, we're working on an app to make that easier, but here's the other thing. And we hear this every time we have customers start using it as well. And we use it here internally. So you take a picture with your phone and you email it in. And it's really not that different of an experience from having it go into an app. And, and I don't know about you, but it's way easier for me to type on my keyboard than it is on my phone. <laughs> so doing the data entry is not as user friendly in a very small window. Now phones are getting bigger pretty soon. They'll be the size of a monitor. So <laughs> it won't matter. But um, but there is that, that transition experience. So we recognize that it's an issue. We are going to build an app. It'll be available early next year. However, at the moment, it is take a picture and email it in using your phone. Um, so it kind of bridges the gap, and most people actually like it once they start using it. So test it out, and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, great question. OK. And the next one is, does QuickTag integrate with GP Workflow? So. When it comes to GP Workflow, the answer is it, it can take a handoff from GP Workflow. There isn't a direct integration built. However, we customize a lot of our workflows. We call them tailored quick apps. So if you need a handoff, say, from the transaction data to feed into something else that's related to QuickTag, or you need a document stored in QuickTag that's related to something that was started uh, in a GP Workflow, then we can scope that out for you. So it's not out of the box, but we can often customize those types of solutions depending on uh, your business requirements. So happy to scope it out and, and have that conversation with you. OK. And how does QuickTag work with mailed invoices? Yep, they just get scanned right into the system. Sean, do you want to take that? Sure. Yeah, pretty simple. So the you know, step one in the process, wherever that is going to be, is going to be in what we call, I refer to as a queue. So <clears throat> I deal with the invoices that are in that queue. So how do they get in? Well, yep, that queue will have an email address, can and almost always does for all of our clients, uh, have an email address assigned to it. Um, and so you can provide that email address to whomever you'd like. If you want to give that to your vendors and have them email uh, documents straight into your QuickTag queue, great. Obviously, internally, you can use that, and they can email them right in. Um, and so that'll take care of you know any kind of thinking about scanning and stuff like that. And if there are still, you might be thinking about your vendor community or the, amongst your own vendors, um, you say, well, not a lot of them send me emails. But it's kind of if you build it, they will come type of thing. If you start letting your vendors know that you have this solution in place and that they can email them, that you probably have some that are asking you if they can email them on the other side of the coin. So. Um, more and more, my point is more and more, as you put this in place, let your vendors know about it, you will see a conversion to a much higher percentage of emailed in or digitally delivered uh, vendor uh, invoices versus hard copy. Okay, great. And I think that might partially answer the next question, but are scanners ever used or is it exclusive with a smartphone? Are scanners ever used? So yeah, I mean, yeah, you can, uh, if we're talking about receipts, now I, I answered that question with, with invoices in mind, sorry, kind of uh, defaulted over there, but um, but uh, same with, you know, the, by the, let me go back to that, so same with receipts, I can email my receipts in too, to my own queue. Um, and I can do that right from my phone, but yes, if I want to go to the scanner and I want to plop my receipt down on the scanner and scan it in and send it to to my queue, I can do it that way as well. We can configure your uh, work, your scanners uh, at your office to work with receipts and, of course, with invoices. Okay. And then finally, one last question. How does pricing work and what are the pricing model options? Mary, you want to take that? Sure. So we have two different 
kind of pricing models, and one is kind of the typical perpetual model that most of you are probably used to. You buy it once, you pay an annual support and maintenance fee, or you can purchase using a subscription model such that you pay an annual um, based on the number of users that you have, which is actually how quick expense is being introduced out of the gate. So if you have, you know, 50 users, 100 users, we take that number, we multiply it by the rate, and that's your price. And so it's the same. And of course, there's, you know, tiered discounts based on the volume of users and all of that sort of thing. Um, it's just a one-time setup fee, and you're off to the races. So it really makes it super simple to get in place. And then you've got options for accounts payable, whether you want to buy that perpetual or, or subscription. So typically, it depends on how your organization likes to buy and have things implemented. Um, but we can support either type of model. So it's easy to get started and low cost to maintain. Yeah, great questions. Okay, great. Well, yeah, that's it for the questions. Did you guys have anything else you wanted to add from the quick tag side before we go ahead and wrap up? No, I would just say thanks for coming and certainly reach out to Turnkey, reach out to Sean, and, uh, or visit this website if you have additional questions or want more information. Sean, you? Uh, no, I would, just, I would just say that in terms of anybody's out there thinking, um, boy, we'd love to have this up and running by the first of the year. Uh, they might be wondering about uh, you know, how fast can QuickTag get implemented. And uh, if you call us soon, <laughs> then yeah, we could, especially with Quick Expense. Quick Expense could be up and running by first of the year. Um, and if you were to purchase sometime here very quickly in the next couple weeks or so, we could have that done. So in case anybody's wondering about that, I know like, people call me today and either they're looking to be live by 1-1, one, one, let's go, let's hurry up or they're looking for budgets for next year and they're thinking about things after audit. So either way, we're happy to talk with you and, and work with you and support you however we can. Okay, great. Well, Sean and Mary, thank you guys so much for presenting with us today. Um, just want to thank everybody for joining us as well. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Turnkey. Um, like I said, we're going to be sending out a follow-up email tomorrow that will have our contact information as well as a link to this web page you're looking at here, and also a recording to the video. Um, so again, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks again for joining us, and until next time, I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.